Dad Dash here, and I'm coming to you today with a special video. Um, a video that I hope will um, help it to be more easily understood um, how the DoorDash uh, cash flow works on an order and why it is so very important, truly very important, that we should be focusing on base pay and why when we don't it's costing drivers money now I understand this is something that uh, we really in the short term um, have limited things we can we can do about it but in the long term when we're asked what needs to happen this is exactly why transparency uh, regarding uh, the monies that are going in and out of an order should be number one on the list of things that we need help with. And if that happens, it would have a game-changing effect um, on how a driver would look at offers and would begin to have a proper negotiation as it's laid out in the TOS with these apps where we would be negotiating what we should be negotiating in the first place. And that is the base pay or the actual pay for the delivery time minus the tip that the tip is actually costing us money big money and allowing these apps to keep a larger amount of money than they should be keeping so guys we're gonna jump inside my phone I'm gonna break this down and we're gonna walk through an order um, and I'm gonna show you where the money is going now. Obviously, I don't know if everything is 100% accurate in terms of what I'm going to show you um, because we don't see an, the information that we would need to. But if we did, we'd be able to understand better um, what are exactly what the cost of the services is, and we would be able to negotiate with these apps um, and get better pay out of them um and uh you know have a better outcome i think for drivers everywhere so guys let's jump into the app here and let's get started all right guys dad dash here so we are inside my phone and i'm gonna take you through here real quick and uh break down what i'm gonna try to show you here so you're gonna see you should see here i'm gonna take my face off the screen here so you can see the full screen and um now you should be able to see here um the the, the breakdown here. So the way this, the, the way I want you to see this is, is you're going to see these boxes here. At the very top, you've got the restaurant and the customer, because these are the two two um, entities that are essentially paying money. Although all money enters, if you you know, we want to be clear on this, all money enters from the customer. All money is actually paid by the customer. That a restaurant is providing their food and is providing you know the product. But the customer is the one that is infusing all of the money into the transaction. But I want, but I have them together up here because together they are um, paying DoorDash essentially. But the money comes from the customer. So you, you, I've taken all these figures off of DoorDash, uh, uh, DoorDash brochures and flyers, and also from the actual delivery screens. So from the customer side. We're dealing with a $100 order here. This is this is a made-up, make-believe. What happens when a customer spends $100 on food with DoorDash? And what happens is is this: first of all, the customer is going to do is going to pay. They're going to pay their their delivery fee. They're going to pay uh, a delivery fee. They're going to pay a maintenance fee. And I have it capped at normally it's capped at $15 or 20% is what the customer is going to pay unless they have Dash Pass and then it's less. But in this case, this customer paid $15 in, in additional DoorDash fees. Um, of course, there's taxes and things. And then they also paid a $5 tip to the driver. So in this case, they paid $120 for 100 bucks worth of food. So the way this was represented here is there's $15, and that's going to go to, we're going to represent that as money paid for purposes of affecting this delivery. So that $15 comes from the customer and moves down here. And then the restaurant who 
at this point would be set to receive the $100 for the food, will pass on of that $100, $35 more to meet their 35% fee that they've agreed to pay DoorDash, and that will also move down here to money paid for delivery. Now this is significant because what we're talking about when we say money paid for delivery, this is the money right here, this is the money pot right here that is being paid for purposes of affecting the delivery. Um, and this is the money right here that's gonna be negotiated between DoorDash and the driver. And the process of that negotiation will determine who gets to keep the most of this money. Now that's significant because um, essentially, this money, you could, you know, if this was, if DoorDash was not involved in this transaction, then essentially this would be the money that if the driver would have be been responsible for negotiating the payout and the value of the services, this is the money that would have that would have actually gone to the driver had the driver come in and say, listen, we want, you know, I'm getting 35% from the restaurant for helping them out and I'm getting you know, $15 or 20% from the customer. Therefore, the driver would have $50 for the purpose of affecting and completing that delivery in that transaction. But because DoorDash exists, DoorDash has negotiated this. So the money is essentially being held by DoorDash and DoorDash is responsible for passing it on to the driver. And the big thing to understand here is that DoorDash holds themselves out to be a technology provider. They have made it very clear. They are not an employer. They are not a restaurant. They're not responsible for preparing food or for delivering food. They're responsible for providing the technology to allow that transaction to occur. So as a result, they collect a fee for providing the platform and the services of, uh, that assist in completing the transaction. And this is true. You can see all the fees from the restaurant, hence that's why I got it. You can see the clear fees that the customer's paying when you go in as a customer to order. The only place where you can't clearly see any fees that DoorDash is being paid is on the driver's side because DoorDash doesn't show any of that information. And this is where the problem begins for DoorDash. Because DoorDash holds that they are simply a platform and a technology provider, this would mean that the contract with the driver should reflect the amount paid by the restaurant and the customer for the services of the driver. And then it should reflect the amount the driver is sharing with DoorDash for purposes of having used the platform and having been provided the service of DoorDash, oh, all the services DoorDash has provided, one of which is helping to safely and securely transfer the monies that are owed to the driver from the restaurant and the customer. And that should be reflected as a percentage. And that is the point that should be being negotiated between the drivers and DoorDash. However, because DoorDash doesn't show that information um, and doesn't provide that information and doesn't have any transparency at all, the driver is not in a position to, to negotiate at all with DoorDash. And in fact, this is where it gets really interesting because DoorDash then uses programs like the Diamond Program, like withholding the ability to dash now, withholding the ability to understand exactly what the payouts are. They use all of these tactics to try to encourage the drivers to accept orders for amounts that are lower than what they really should be receiving. And they allow them to essentially drive up the cost of their service and get the drivers to agree to accept a higher fee for the services being provided than what they really should be being provided. And because most politicians, most government officials do not look at DoorDash in this way, and they look at DoorDash as an employer, they approach it from the wrong perspective. Because the issue at hand is, is one of the main issues and driving issues here is that DoorDash 
um, should be providing a, a transparent and consistent way for drivers to understand the cost of the service they're providing. And there's some serious constitutional and legal issues when a business is charging for a service in a way that the individuals paying for that service can't, could, you know, are unable to understand the cost of the service in a way that it ends up damaging them or costing them their property or their money. And in this case, that's what DoorDash does every time it hides things and every time it forces a driver or entices a driver or gets a driver to accept an order, um, you know, without sharing the information that's really required for the driver to make an intelligent decision. So in this case here, the thing you've got to understand is, is this, when you look at this order, let's follow the flow of the money. The, dri the customer in the restaurant, in this case, has paid $50 for purposes of affecting this delivery. This money be is being held by DoorDash. The driver enters the picture with no idea how much money has been paid, no idea what the cost should be, no idea what the breakdown is. And DoorDash goes out and says, okay, Mr. Driver, I'm going to offer you $2.25, and the customer has added a $5 tip. So we're going to show you $7.25. Now, the driver has no idea at that moment whether the base pay is $2.25, whether it's $7.25, whether it's $4.25 and a $3 tip. All they know is, is that there's a guaranteed payout of at least $7.25, to which DoorDash says, take it or leave it. And the driver says, well, it's three miles, 725, I'll take it. Now, for DoorDash, DoorDash has collected the fees from the restaurant and the customer, and regardless of three miles, two miles, one mile, five miles, the, this money has been paid to them. And the tip doesn't matter. There could have been no tip there. DoorDash is still gonna get that $50. And if the driver accepts the $2.25 and says, okay, Essentially, what they've agreed to is, is yes, there's been $50 paid for purposes of affecting that delivery. DoorDash has said, we have decided that the value of our services today to you, Mr. Driver, is a 95.5% fee. Do you accept that? We will pass on 225 to you, plus you will get your tip. Anybody who would see this and say, wait a minute, DoorDash, you're keeping $47.75 of my money for affecting this delivery? And DoorDash will say, well, yes, you agreed to it. Well, no, I didn't because I didn't know that. And DoorDash says, well, it doesn't matter. We showed it to you and you said it was a valuable enough order and a profitable enough order and you took it. This is where the problem lies. And this is why what we should be negotiating each and every time is base pay. And Door DoorDash should be required to show us what the actual payout is being paid from the restaurant, from the customer for purposes of the delivery, and it's meant to be passed on to the driver. And it should be reflecting the amount that's paid to the driver and then reflecting the amount that the driver is paying back to DoorDash for use of the service, because that is what's happening here. So under this scenario, if these numbers were, were actual numbers that were being used, and they may be, the driver would effectively be paying a $47.75 fee back to DoorDash, and then the driver would be getting to keep $2.25 for the opportunity to complete that delivery, and then also would get to keep the $5 gratuity that would have shared by the customer to the driver, and they would essentially walk home with $7.25 while DoorDash would clear $47.75 of the money. Um, and that's what DoorDash gets to keep. So the question at hand is, is that fair? Is that correct? And should DoorDash be able to, to hide from the drivers if they're holding out that they are a delivery platform, that they are a service providing platform, should they be able to hide the true cost of the service to the drivers? And the answer to that question would be no, but because most drivers don't view the platform in this way, and don't require or don't ask or don't advocate and say, show us the base pay. Screw the tip. Put the tip at the very end. 
We want to know what is the actual cost? What are the fees that are being paid through the restaurant, through the customer that are meant for the driver? Now, again, I understand some of you may come back and say, well, wait a minute, that $35 fee, you know, under this case of 35% of fee, all of it's not intended for the driver. And all of it might not be, but I don't know because it doesn't really specify with any specificity with, we know that's the fee being paid, but what is the amount? that should be going to the driver because there is a portion that the restaurant's paying for the driver services. There's also a portion that the customer's paying for the driver services. And we need to understand exactly what those amounts are and we need to know what that is. And since we know what the customer pays and we know what the restaurant pays DoorDash for, for their services, what exactly is the driver paying? And this is the question that we need answers to. This is the question that should have been answered, asked to Tony Hsu. This is the question that should be asked to Uber, to Lyft, to all of these services. Because every single one of these apps operates in the exact same way. All right, guys, let's jump outside of my phone and we'll wrap this up. Right, guys, so I hope that that presentation came through. Um, and it helps shed a little bit of a better understanding on how we as drivers should be looking at these apps from DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber, Lyft, all of them. Because this is, you know, I use DoorDash in this example now, you know, but this applies to every single gig app out there. Every single one of them is a technology platform that is simply providing a service to the driver to help them with uh, perform and transact uh, tasks for their business, revenue generating tasks. And when you use the Uber platform, when you use the Grubhub platform, when you use the DoorDash platform, you're simply using the platforms and their technology to complete the deliveries or the orders or the task at hand that they have offered you a contract for. And then you are essentially, there's money in each of these platforms that has been set aside or been collected that they're holding, think of it like an escrow or they're holding it in an account for whatever, whenever they find their driver and dispatch their driver. And then out of that money, the, the, the platform is entitled to a fee on the driver portion. The problem we have is none of these apps, none of these apps really do a very good job of showing the driver what that is, what that cost is and breaking it down in that way. And the reason they do that is because they understand that they don't want to be locked in to um, a particular cost or a particular fee because they understand if they can entice a driver through making them believe acceptance rate matters, making them believe that these programs matter, uh, making them believe that they need to accept some of these lower paying orders in order to make more money over here or get tips or get the higher tipped orders, then they, then they, then they know they can collect bigger and bigger fees and bigger and bigger percentages uh, on, uh, of the driver's money. Um, because if they can get you to do a $7 order, like say on the Spark platform, you take a $7 base pay order and the customers tip $10 and you think you're getting 17, but they've collected $20, uh, you know, of money that should be going to the driver or is thought to be going to the driver in the transaction. And they get to keep 13 of it. They've essentially charged the driver a $13 hidden fee that the driver's never seen, isn't aware of. And the driver happily says, well, I got my $7 and my $10 tip actually should have gotten maybe a $30 payout in that situation. But because you were focused only on tips and you said, well, I'll take the minimum base pay. I don't need base pay. I want tips. You just left $13 on the table. Money that was entitled to you, money that you should have negotiated for, and money that these apps should have shown why they got what they got and made sure that they provided an equal value to what they're charging you for, for uh the services they're providing and if they can't show that 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 it's a consistent amount that's held to market standards there's legal issues surrounding that and there's also you know potential problems that can be risen that can arise for the platforms 
when looking at how they're administering these contracts and what they're asking their drivers to do and how they're asking the drivers to operate. But anyways, guys, listen, this is why you need to ensure at a very minimum that you are going out and maximizing your value on your orders. Negotiate with these apps. Do not worry about your acceptance rate if it's not making you money. Let your acceptance rate follow your money. Go out, demand value from these apps. Demand to be paid fair market value. If you do so, the apps will find the money to pay you. Trust me, it's there. They will figure out what to do, whether that's going back and asking the customer to tip more, which they will almost never do, or cutting you in to more money and lowering the amount of money they're gonna take on the back end off of that order. Anyways, guys, I hope this was an informative video. I hope you got something from it. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. As always, guys, stay safe, stay profitable, and Dad Dash will talk to you.